We are It's Just a Hill, a cycling club that promotes inclusion, judgment-free, with no gatekeepers. Focused on creating content from behind the handlebars to in the studio, It's Just a Hill is producing videos and podcasts to spread the message that cycling is for everyone. We are focused on reminding everyone that riding your bike can help you overcome any obstacle. Because after all, it's just a hill. Hello and welcome to another episode of the It's Just a Hill Cycling Podcast. I am John Stenning and in just a bit I will be joined by my dad, conveniently also named John Stenning. Past guest of the podcast, integral member of It's Just a Hill, integral member of my life of course. And we will be talking about group ride etiquette and if you came to our latest group ride first of all thank you it was fantastic we collaborated with coffee yes cycling maybe and the tri-state cycling club did a ride out of we roast coffee in lincoln rhode island and it was great we called it our powers combined group ride uh we're very lucky in this area to have a lot of different options for group rides a lot of great cycling clubs uh inclusive welcoming groups of people that encourage each other to want to ride bikes more and in turn help the community that was a great ride. We rode in the rain. Uh, this interview, uh, interview conversation with my dad, whatever you want to call it, did take place uh, before this ride. But if you came to the ride, you might know that some of these group ride etiquette um, things came up during the ride. Uh, there were some people that I think took some unnecessary risks on the ride. It was raining. I think a lot of us probably had a lot of fun riding in the rain, a lot more fun than we normally would have had just sitting on our couches on a raining day. But you know, bombing down hills and uh, taking sort of blind left turns onto busy roads at stop signs is not appreciated on our group rides. So if you plan on coming, uh, I would ask you not to do that. And if you do do that, I will probably tell you that I didn't appreciate it. And maybe you might not like the way that I say that because I am emotional and passionate and a bit too emotional and passionate at times, but lines were crossed, people were not riding safely, and it just doesn't fly, and I don't appreciate it. And I hate to start this on a negative note, but I think uh, a lot of the things that my dad and I discussed uh, were great points. I hate to pat, I'm not sure I'm trying to pat myself on the back, but there were also some things that we didn't bring up. So if there are any things that uh, you can think of after you hear the conversation uh, with my dad about group riding etiquette, please leave them in the comments below or send me an email, john at itsjustahill.com, and we'll talk about them on a follow-up episode when it comes to group riding etiquette. So yeah, if you do end up watching this on YouTube, not only do we appreciate you liking the video or subscribing to our channel, but leave a comment and let us know what you think about when it comes to group riding etiquette or things that we might have missed out or things that you want to elaborate on a, a little bit. Um, that being said, uh, I would like you to take this time to note down in your journal, in your diary, in your calendar, I guess I probably should have said calendar first, for Cranksgiving. If you are familiar, we did our first Cranksgiving last year at We Roast, which I mentioned before for our last group ride, us and Coffee S yes, Cycling Maybe, and we're going to do it again. It is going to be on November 24th. Like, uh, like I said, out of We Roast, um, what we're going to encourage you to do is to bring canned goods, uh, non-perishable food items that we can donate to local centers like the Johnny Cake Center, uh, the Rhode Island Food Bank, and your donation will be your entry into our raffle. Uh, we'll have some raffle tickets for you, for you to get when you hand in your uh, donations. That's usually how that works. Duh, I don't know why I'm going over that. Most people are familiar. And... Um, that raffle ticket will get you into the raffle. Maybe you can get a hat like this or an It's Just a Hill shirt or maybe some coffee beans from local roasters and all stuff like that. So the uh, all the details have not been ironed out yet. Roots have not been posted yet, but the date is there and it is uh, just under two months away, November 24th. So take the time to mark it down. And um, yeah, I'm going to talk to my dad and you'll see that part here. And I'm now I'm just rambling. So thank you and... Uh, Enjoy the rest of the show. Oh, wow. He's leaning in, pressing a button. <laughs> Welcome back to the podcast. Uh, my dad, the one and only John with an H standing. Hi, dad. How are you? Very well. Thank you. Thanks for having me on again. No problem. Thanks for coming back. We are going to talk about group riding etiquette. This is an idea I think that we were talking about for a couple weeks now, but first let's talk about the shirts you have on the couch here. You have a free sep shirt and then these Coos shirts. Um, 
Now we just got these. We're on the tail end of Sepp Koos winning the Vuelta. Uh, why, why do you have him on the couch? Just proud father moment. Is that what we're looking at here? Well, just to give Jeff LaPierre a little pimping also. Yeah. Jeff sent a, out the extra Koos shirts. That's like the kiss logo, but it says uh, Sepp's last name instead, which I think is great. Um, I do too. It's pretty cool. I'd, I'd be wearing mine, but it's, now it's all of a sudden very cold in Rhode Island. It's like a high temperature of 60 degrees today. So hoodies, it's hoodie season, at least for this weekend. Um, uh, let's talk about group riding etiquette. Um, you know, I sort of, I host a good amount of group rides. You have ridden a good, a lot, uh, a good amount of group rides. I think there is a lot to be talked about when it comes to um, like ride etiquette. And I think um, unwritten rules are silly. So let's, let's put them out there and talk about like, what um you know you should do when you're riding in a group because riding in a group can be very different from riding alone would you say the same oh definitely definitely right when you're riding alone you really don't have to care about anyone but yourself you don't have to point shit out you can swerve around something really quick you can not not have a route or whatever so when you think of group riding etiquette what's like the first thing that comes to mind as far as wanting people to do that i'm in the group with yeah, like what's a what what is a good a good tip for good group riding etiquette? Do not overlap wheels. Okay, that's the first that's the first thing you think of. Do not overlap wheels. Yes. Yep. And why? Because of the the safety is a big safety thing. Yeah, you get that guy in the front that doesn't point something out and swerves around it and you're overlapping him. Mean, he comes into your wheel, you're going down. Right. So if people don't understand, right, if you're riding in a pace line and you're watching this video, you can see my hands are wheels and they're right behind each other. Right. And sometimes we'll, maybe we'll talk about this in a little bit, but sometimes there are echelons, right, where you're maybe you're not directly behind a person, but you're off to the left or off to the right a little bit, depending on where the wind is coming from. But what you don't want to do is you don't want to overlap the wheel like you don't want your front wheel to be further forward than the person in front of you's back wheel is back. Because this happens, and usually the person in the second wheel is going down, right? Yes. Because that wheel turns. Uh, that front wheel turns. So, yeah, overlapping a wheel is very dangerous. I, I would say the first – I think the first – I think the first rule of group riding etiquette is talk about what the etiquette is before the ride starts. Very true. You know a what I mean? Like Rides don't do that. Yeah. And it, this could be a, this could be like a, like, you know, I could be talking like an IGER ride. This could be like a, like, right. If I'm like a ride leader, if you will, I'm putting that in quotes for anyone who's not watching. Cause I certainly wouldn't call myself a ride leader, but sometimes that's how it works out with the group ride. And you, you know, I talk to people before if the group's five people or if the group's 20 people, you know, um, but it might not even be an organized group ride. It's just you riding with like two or three of your buddies. But I think it's important to be like, Hey, this is the type of ride we're having. Right. We're either going to hammer, we're not going to hammer, we're going to get coffee, um, let's like warm up for 30 minutes and then do some intervals or whatever. But just like talk about what that ride is, because if people aren't on the same page, then you're screwed from the beginning. It, true. That's very true. Great point. Never even never even entered my mind because most group rides I go to do have a talk. Yeah, which is great, right? But I think it should be like discussed, like, hey, this is you know, these are the type of efforts. This is how long we're doing it. Um, you know, we're, we're going to regroup here, like with the IJA rides, you know, we always regroup at the top of Hills or different stuff like that when the group starts to separate, but that's also for a no drop ride. I mean, if it's a drop ride and everyone's hammering, then the rules are going to be different. Exactly. But if it's a small group of three guys, yeah, you could even say, Hey, if it's too quick for you, just let us know, say, slow it down a bit or speed it up right. a bit. I'm fine. Right. Rather than, having to regroup because there's only three people. Oh yeah, for sure. Right. I feel like regrouping is definitely like more of a, a bigger group thing. Right. Um, but yeah, just that type of, of like being on the same page, I think is important. Um, and then there's the safety things like you talked about, not overlapping wheels, I think is a very important one. Um, you know, this, it might come easier to you if you've done more group rides to ride someone's wheel, right? I mean, at first, I think it's a little bit intimidating to ride right behind someone, you know, and it depends on how that person rides. Um, but also for safety, pointing things out on the road, right? Definitely. Huge, yeah. huge. Potholes, grates, sticks, rocks, 
whatever signaling out turns being sig- signaling and just like communicating while you're riding is very important right um, I agree. even if everyone has the uh root on their head unit which i also think is important if you have a head unit if you're lucky enough to own one because they can be expensive or a phone just like just put the friggin' root on your damn head unit you know i'm guilty of not putting mine in sometimes it's so uh you've been a lot better about it lately and but and sometimes it like there's a learning curve to it right because head units they can be complicated you're you have a wahoo and you're trying to sync it with strava and like are you logged into strava is it is it all connected it's not like the easiest thing in the world but maybe that means show up to the group ride a few minutes early and ask a friend you know ask someone yeah. else that's there um cuz i think that's another thing like if the ride is leaving at 8 o'clock it takes you 10 minutes to get ready. Don't show up at 7.55. Well, the ride I went on this morning, 7, yeah. o'clock, right? 7 o'clock ride. Yeah. I get there at 6.48, ride to the ride. Yeah. And we don't take off until 7.16. Yeah. So, so maybe like three to five minutes is okay. But 7.16, that's a long time. It was bad. Yeah, that's a long time. You were there 12 minutes early and you end, that was a 28-minute swing for you. That sucks. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I like, I, I, if we say, if we say pedals up or wheels up or whatever at eight, I usually start to talk at eight to give people a couple extra minutes. I mean, we're not like, I'm not going to like leave people in the parking lot either, but just like be courteous, you know, just unless, like, it's, Kevin, unless it's Kevin Clammer. That did happen to Kevin. Yeah. But see, I didn't know. I didn't know that. I didn't know that Kevin was in the car still getting ready. But, but I think that's another thing too, is like, even if there is a ride leader and if you're starting out with like good communication, just keep the communication going throughout the day, right? Like, like you said, like, Hey, we're going way too hard or like, Hey, shouldn't we be riding a little bit harder than this? Or, Hey, so-and-so has fallen off the back, you know, exactly. like, like there are a lot of rides where people just show up, put on their helmets, ride, don't say much to each other, get back to their cars, put their bikes back in their trucks or whatever and leave. Like, I think it's best if you can, if the roads are wide enough and there's not traffic, double pace line. Yeah. You know, 200 watts, maybe 220. Yep. yep. Conversation pace. Right. Especially for a ride like that, that is just like a no drop ride, conversation yeah. pace, two by. Yeah. And I, I also think like, a two by group is a little bit better for cars to pass instead of like one single file line of like 20 to 30 people. You know what I mean? Like that's a lot more strung out. The group is way more strung out. It's harder to pass, especially on like new England roads with like blind corners and stuff, you know? So um, I think it establishes a little bit more of like dominance on the road as well. You know, like you want to be seen as a cyclist. And so If you're riding two by, you're maybe a little bit more likely to be seen and not just be like pinched around a corner or something too. So that's not, yeah, that's a good point. Um, All right, let's see. As far as safety things are concerned, um, also calling things out, not just like pointing out a stick, but like saying stick or saying like right-hand turn because sometimes everyone might not be able to see hand signals, right? So Well, also that, that hand signal has to be passed down. First guy, first guy points. Second guy has to point because that third guy. You think everyone? You think everyone has to point? Yeah, because if somebody's in a position that's getting that, if yeah. they're in an angle where they're being blocked from seeing the point, yeah, then they could be the guy that's going to hit the pothole, the stick, the rock, the screw. Totally. And what other option do they have when they get there not to hit it? They got to jump over it. Yeah. Right. No. I mean, you're right. I mean. I was purely curious. I've had, I've actually had people tell me that I point out too many things on the road. People tell people tell me the same thing. Uh, if you don't know what it is, like I'll see a, yeah. I think it's a rock. Yeah. And you know, you're 10, 20 yards away. Sure. And you point to it and the guy behind you'll say, nice leaf. Yeah. It was a leaf. Yeah. But so big deal. I was trying to be safe. Thank you. I say Get the off same my thing. back. As long as you're not, being unsafe by taking your hand off the bars like you're not going to do it on a painted line in a road in a roundabout you know right point something. right right and this isn't like like we're not talking about racing either because that's no, very I know. I'm right talking that's about, very very different you're talking about safety yeah i went to 
an event this afternoon. And there were two people in my neighborhood that were on their bikes, a male and a female. Yeah. The husband had a helmet on, the wife did not. I know they're taking a left where I'm taking a left. So I go very slow behind them, allowing them plenty of time to take that left. This is what gives some cyclists a bad name and has people get into accidents on their bikes because they both had mirrors on their bikes. Like they weren't, they weren't racing bikes. They were cruisers, you know, just cruising down to the pool. And instead of turning left, you know, they had 20 yards between me and them. They pull over to the right side of the road and put their feet down. So yeah, but they might not be comfortable though. That's my point. You have to, when you're on the on your bike on the road, I think you have to act as much like a car as you, you yes. obey the r- rules of the road. Yes. I mean, we will roll through stop signs more so than a car. Yep. But that's a the, that is a this has become a new law in a lot of states. Have you heard about the it's Idaho a, stop? It's a law in Florida. It was recently passed in Rhode Island. I don't know if it's officially like in like in play, but it, we did pass it here. And so basically, if, if people don't know, an Idaho stop means that you can roll through a stop sign and you can essentially like come to a almost like a full stop at a red light. But once you've checked, you can then continue to move on because a lot of stop lights might not turn like they would for a car because of a sense or whatever. Yeah. So right. is there is there a limited number of riders that can roll through at one time in Rhode Island? Oh, I don't know. Good question. Do you, you have one in Florida? It's nine. Nine? Yeah. So if you've got a group of 12. Yeah. Theoretically, or whatever you, whatever word it is, you, yeah. have, you have to stop. The guy has to stop, you know, being a law-abiding cyclist. The 10th guy has to stop. That's, no one's going to do that. I know. No one's going to do that. I know that. That's, <laughs> that's what they say, though. Oh, that's you know? interesting. I feel like if that's the case and it is like a big group, like a group of 20, then yeah, everyone just like relax for a second at the stop sign. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, over here in Florida, there's a lot of older people that ride their bikes. Yeah. And on a lot of the roads, there's a sidewalk, a piece of grass and then 10, you know, 10 foot piece of grass and then a sidewalk. Yeah. But they're riding on the sidewalk against traffic. Yeah. Like a pedestrian. Yes, but on the other, like on, on the other side of the road. Yeah, and then, then when they come to a four-way stop sign. Yeah, that it's creates, all wrong. It's all wrong. Everything you've learned about traffic patterns is off. Exactly. Yeah. Those people taking the right, right yeah. into you, everything. Right. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, all all bikes should move with traffic, and there should be bike lanes instead of sidewalks. But some people are probably just mostly confident on the sidewalk. Cars are like, cars are the worst. Yes. Attila, huh? Attila almost touched a car today. A truck. They, just, they like, I mean, and I don't even, I could, I, I could have a whole podcast about the size of trucks because trucks are just like way too big and everyone has a freaking truck. And I'm not talking about people that like need trucks for work or whatever, but like people that just like use trucks to like, go to the grocery store and like commute to their regular jobs. And these trucks are like the hood of the truck is like taller than you are when you sit on a bike. Do you know what I mean? Like it's just, and there's so much of it and it's so like bad for the environment. It's so bad for the road infrastructure. And like they're just, they have big blind spots and it's just. Macho America, man. This truck culture, this car culture in America is just wild. Did you get the people, this is on a different tangent, you get the guys with the diesel trucks that don't like, you know, 10 guys riding down the road in spandex. Yeah. So they roll coal on you and just blast you with diesel. I mean, how dangerous. Long, think about what kind of person that is that does that. Think about yeah. their mindset. You know? Yeah, very, like, extremely hateful and dangerous because, I mean, I'm sure if you, like, you know, if you've ever heard a news story about someone actually like inhaling that diesel cloud and so, people yeah. have passed out and like, I, know. I think died from like passing out, falling and hitting their head or yeah, like 
Why? It's, Why? So that because you don't like guys in tights and riding bikes, get the hell out of here. Unbelievable. Uh, unbelievable. Oh, let's so so I think we covered safety pretty well, right? And I think it sort of boils down to just like talking a lot, right? Keep keep the lines of communication open before the ride, during the ride, um, all that sort of stuff. Um, or even even if there's a weaker rider in the group, yeah. Like communicate to that guy, you know, do a short pull. Just go out there, just rotate right through, Great. and then get back on because that will eventually slow the whole group down if everybody's shooting for a you know a nineteen pace or a twenty five pace, whatever it may be. No, that's a good point. Something that I have written down here is like is about taking pulls, right? And so uh, taking pulls when you're the front rider in the group, or say the front two riders in the group, if you are riding a two by system, right? And I think actually riding a two by system is another great way to like ride on the front because you're sort of keeping each other in check, right? Like yeah. you're not riding too hard it, when it's just single by single file pace line. Maybe you're relying on the person right behind you to be like, Hey, you're riding a little bit too hard. But if you are on the front, you are the one that's responsible for pointing out all of those things first. You're also the one that's sort of responsible of the whole, the smoothness of the group, yeah. right? Some yeah. people are really surgy on the front. Um, if if they're like new to a pull, right? This is something I have written down. Like if you, if someone just flicked their elbow, right? That's a thing that you do. If you're riding a single file pace line, you're on the right-hand side of the road, you flick your right elbow, which, which means like come through on my right-hand side. I'm going to pull off to the left. That person, sometimes they get a little bit too excited and they just like all of a sudden they're going from 180 watts because they were sitting in the wheel to like 250. And that person that just pulled off is getting their ass dropped. And yes. that's no good for anyone. No. It's not good because the person is surging too much. They're doing too much. Um, well, yeah, the, too you got to think about it like this. If the guy's looking at his head unit and he's pushing 180 watts, he knows yeah. he's saving probably 20 to 30 percent. Sure. So he's got to add that 20, 30 percent and only hit that threshold right. of watts when he gets right. to the front it's yeah, kind of simple if you think about it, it is. Some, some guys don't get it some guys have that i'm getting to the front and i'm going as hard as i can yes no? yeah i think um and i this happens at a lot of group rides i'm guilty of it but cycling is somewhat competitive right and if it's just a group ride it is right and and so you you know you want to show like hey i'm strong but there are ways of showing like, hey, you're strong and you can like do your pull without like being the guy that blows up the ride, right? Yeah. And like yeah. you said, if you're someone that maybe your fitness isn't where you want it to be or it isn't with like the average of the group, then you can still get on the front and you can still do that 210, 220 watts, but only do it for 15 or 30 seconds, right? Exactly. And then the other people who feel like they are better at pulling or have better fitness, maybe they sit out there for a few minutes, right? Well, what do you think a pull should be? How long do you think you should stay out there? Depends who's pulling. I'll pull you for fucking 20 minutes, but it depends on who's pulling. Um, but, and if everyone's fitness is the same, yep. how hard are you trying to run? Well, if, I, if you're riding hard, if you're going for a lot of speed. Yeah, 30 seconds to a minute. Say there's four guys, I think it should just be a rotating pace line. Just yeah, if, 15 if, to 30. Yeah, like when we do a full gas Friday or fast Friday or whatever the hell you want to call it, it's usually about 30 seconds to a minute out front, you know, and it's pretty, it's pretty much like and and that really only means that you're probably only in the wind for 10 to 15 seconds because of the way that the whole thing is sort of constantly ebbing and flowing, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, it depends on how hard you're trying to ride. I think because on like a regular group ride, I'll sit out front for five minutes, you know, I've, I've been on rides with you where you sat out front for five hours. Yeah. I've got no problem with it, but I, and I, but I'm also like trying to do it because, because I hate to sound like I'm patting myself on the back, but I can ride pretty smooth and pretty at a pretty steady power for a good amount of time. And so if it means that everyone else gets to like take a break and like, but if we're all of the same fitness levels that, you know, say, say it's like me and Brian and Cal and Brian and all that, like, you know, we're just going to be like two minutes, two minutes, two minutes, whatever. But yeah. it really depends. I mean, sometimes we're just like in the middle of nowhere, Connecticut, and we're all just like riding next to each other, joking about whatever, you know, we've been there. Yeah. Yeah. 
You know, well, it, but it really depends on the effort that you're trying to put in. But I think just by showing that you're willing to get on the front, even if your fitness isn't great, I think that helps the group and it it will help everyone eventually. Even if it's for 15 seconds. Yeah. And then like maybe you want to do 30 seconds or you want to do 45 seconds and you're going to, because we all know that like riding with people that are stronger than you is one of the best things that you can do, right? Is like, if you're trying to get more fit and like ride a little bit faster, a little bit stronger, just ride with people that are stronger than you, you know? But also to get stronger, you got to ride solo because you can't always be sitting in. Very true. You can ride in groups too much for sure. For sure. Yeah. And you you're sitting in your average might be 20, 21, but right. Yeah. But that's basically like, I mean, I hate, I kind of hate the term junk miles. Um, I but think I think that's sort of junk mile ish. Yeah. But there's still miles. Even if you're yeah, no, in- that's why I don't like junk miles because miles yeah. are still miles. But, but if you're really trying to go for progress, you do need to do whether you want to call them FTP intervals or VO2 max intervals or whatever, and not just sit in a group and have your heart rate, you know, flutter around 110 for yeah. 10 hours a week. You know, that's not gonna, I mean, obviously we're not coaches. What the hell do we know? But like, I do think, you know, yeah. I hear you. Yeah. Um, all right. What about pacing climbs? How do you feel about pacing a climb? You know, some people like to just like go, I, I've done this before too. Like I just like to get to the top of the climb. I'm not a good climber. Yep. It's much better for me for someone to pace me up a climb. Yeah. I think it's much better for the group. Yeah. I can go faster. Someone pacing me. You're right. not getting much of a draft, especially oh. if it's a deep incline. 10%. Right. But it's better for me psychologically, I guess, just to stay with that person and knowing if it's a person that is pushing you almost to your limit, but letting you, stay there you know yeah yeah for sure i think one thing that i read online i don't know if it was you know i was looking up like group riding etiquette stuff and what they said and i thought this was cool is like pace it for the middle of the group right like don't try to be the fastest one up the top and i think this is great when it comes to like iger rides right because like we do try to find hills but we do regroup at the top of hills whenever we can but if you're the guy that's getting to the top of the hill every time, you're going to rush to the top of the hill. Then you're going to be standing around. Even if it's for 15 seconds, like, wouldn't it just be better to like relax a little bit and like ride everyone rides together. And so you don't have to stop and unclip and like yeah. build up lactic acid or get a little bit cold, you know, whatever it is. Right. Like just like, so, yeah. so maybe the worst guy and maybe the worst climber in the group. Yeah. He might suffer. He might suffer a little bit. Sure. Sure. To hang on, right. but he's not getting dropped and people aren't waiting for him at the top. Right. Not like you're looking back and you're like, where the hell did they go? You know, like you can't see them anymore. That's very different than like a couple wheels off, like a couple of bike lengths. Right. And it's disheartening for the guy that can't yeah. be seen. Right. You know? And that's not like, well, that's not like a, a good welcoming, like, you know, that's not fun. That's yeah. not fun. Um, oh, and one other, oh, a couple more things sprinting away from stops and like people that like hang through corners you know like or like green light and then like you try to put down like your your fastest sprint you're gonna do 1200 watts out of the green light like some track cyclist that's not cool happens here all the time yeah really if if there's a green light most a lot of roads here have a bike lane yeah so if, if there's a green light even if there's a red light and you can see left we'll take the corner pretty hard yeah. If if because you a lot of roads they're wide open down here. Right. Some guys will take that corner doing 2022 and then hit the straightaway. And because you're getting momentum, centrifugal force on that corner, you might yeah. they'll pick it up to 25, 26, and people are getting spit out the back because it it's it's that's the worst thing I hate. The yeah, surging because- surging off cornering and yeah. I mean that is a race, that's a race tactic. That is how you yes. race bikes. Like that's not what a group ride is all about. I I know. Yeah. You know, yeah. it, 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 when you're doing that, you're trying to drop people. You're trying yeah. to hurt people. Yeah. Not yeah. Physically. You're hundred percent trying to, because people will fall off the back because just naturally things get strung out at corners anyway. Right. Yeah. So like it's if all... Yeah. 
you know, you're trying to play it a little bit more safe. You want to be able to see you're, you're giving yourself a little bit of extra like length in between you and the wheel in front of you. Right. And so one, the person on the front, if you're 10 wheels back, and that's already like that's such a split. That's just not. You could lose twenty yards in easy. five seconds. Yeah, easy, easy, easy. Um, I don't really have anything else. Oh, one. I have one. One other thing, and then we can think about anything else that comes to mind. But like, sort of goes to if you like, you feel like you can only take fifteen or thirty seconds pulls. Like, don't overexert yourself so that you get yourself dropped. Right, like. Stay fueled, stay hydrated, um, especially if it's like a longer group ride, like you're out there for like two plus hours, right? Like um, if you're out there for more than two hours, you're probably going to want to carry some calories with you, whether it's in your bottles as like scratch or Gatorade or whatever, or it's just like a banana in your pocket. Um, so many people go out on like 50 or 60 mile rides and just like no food in their pocket, just water in their bottles. And maybe that works for you, but if everyone else is like drinking and eating, you're going to be, you're going to be shit out of luck. Unless you're. Unless you're like, yeah, Superman. Yeah. Super loaded up too. Yeah. Right. Right. I mean, I'm sure. Yeah. That's not like black and white, you know, but, um, I just, I just see people not drinking their bottles or like, we'll get done with a long ride and they're like, Oh, I only, I only drank half of one bottle. We were out there for like three hours. It just, um, Seems kind a of lot of it has to do with the speed of the ride too though like if sure. people are hanging on yeah and they're you know they're suffering so they're grabbing the bars tight they right. don't even want to reach down to grab that bottle and yeah i don't drink enough on gravel because it's that's another thing that's another safety issue people reaching down for their bottle and yeah. taking their eyes off the road in front of them if somebody hits the brakes there like you can reach down for your bottle keep your your eyes forward, grab your bottle mm -hmm. down here. A lot of guys go like this. They'll take their bottle out of the cage and hold it out. Why? I'll, hold, I'll let the group know that they're taking a drink. Really? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of groups say to do that. Hey, if you take a drink, just let everybody know. So they pull the bottle out. They just put it out like this. They take their drink. They put the bottle back out here and put it back in the cage. Without oh, looking. I never heard of that. Because people have dropped bottles. So you're making everybody aware, Hey, this could be a situation where something might happen. Just right. the bottle being hand, right. not handed around, but there's a bottle out there. And yeah, I think another, another safety thing, the squirrely rider, oh. the, the guy that doesn't hold the line, you know? Yeah. yeah. I mean, what do you say to that guy? Or what about the guy that brings the tri bonds to the group ride or the pace so line? So those are two very different things. The guy that brings the tri bars to the group ride, honestly, he needs to be spoken to. I agree. The person that isn't great at holding a wheel and probably gets even worse at holding a wheel towards the end of a ride because they're more tired and they're more fatigued. Yep. That is a tricky, that is a much trickier situation, I think, because you want to be sensitive to people. You don't want to like embarrass them, right? You don't want to be like, hold the wheel, right? We've all heard that before, like whether hold it's your line. or hold your line, right? Like no one wants that. But I mean, it is like everyone's safety. That's a question here. So that's a good point. Like that's probably best for someone um, like who is a group leader or a ride leader to like pull them aside, maybe after the ride and be like, well, that rides with them all the time. Right. Hey, you know, you know like, go tell Pete. Right. That he's a little squirrely, or you could even say to him, if he's new to the group and nobody knows him. Yeah. You could say, Hey, John's a smooth rider, isn't he? Right. Like put, Good it, point. In, right. put it in their head to say, to hey, be he, smooth. Just, he just does ride. Nice. Yeah, because like there are, you know, sometimes there are a lot of things to avoid on the roads or you are feeling a little bit tired or maybe like your bike fit isn't even 100 percent right. So you're a little bit twitchy in the front. Um, and those are all sort of things that I think could allow something like that to happen. But um, yeah, I mean, there's definitely a if you're looking if you're looking ahead on the road and you see a rock 50 yards down that's a lot different than having your head down and seeing a rock 5 feet in front of you and all of a sudden you're like ah fuck you know you got to like soar right away
Well, you ever be in a pace line and you see guys like I've seen guys in front of me. I know they're looking at that rear wheel of the guy in front of them. And I'm thinking, yeah. do not, do not do that. Keep your head off. Did like, you look. see, did you see Stefan Kung in the um, European championship inter- uh, time trial? Individual I, time trial? I, I did watch it, but I didn't see what happened. He had his head down. He had his head down in a TT, and he smashed into a barrier, went down very hard, broke his helmet, bled bled from his head, and and continued to ride the bike. Yesterday? Uh, A few days ago. Yeah, I I saw it on YouTube. I mean, just like like so many bad things happened there, you know? Like, yeah, you got to keep your eyes up. if it's one guy, if you if there's one guy, I keep my eyes on his back or even like around his head. I'm looking up the road. Oh, I'm looking everywhere. I'm looking. I'm looking underneath your armpit to try to see the shit before yeah. you see it. Like, well, what about there's another big safety issue in group rides, especially climbing. People don't realize how far they come back if they don't know how to not come back when they stand up. Great point. Can't believe and I didn't say this. This is my favorite thing. Your group rides do it well. You always give the two chicken wings. Yeah, chicken wings. Down here, they do this. They take it one hand, and they go like this. Oh. To tell the guy, back off a little bit. Right. I'm standing up. Because some right. people don't to keep that speed. No, no, there are definitely a ways of making it so that you don't, your pace doesn't change when you do stand up, whether that's a shift as you come up or just like engaging your glutes a little bit more before you stand. But some people will stand up and essentially their the flow causes them to not move forward at the same pace. So essentially it's like they're coming back a little bit, but it's also the person in, in back is like coming up too, too fast. Well, they're maintaining the pace and the guy right. in front isn't. So it appears right. that he's coming back. Yeah. So a, a double elbow flick, uh, or a single elbow flick when I'm about to stand up and a double elbow flick when there's like a bump in the road. Um, I'm a big fan of the elbow flicks. Yeah. Me too. Okay, heads up, but something's about to happen. I don't like down here a lot of guys in a pace line instead of just doing the elbow flick because both of your hands are staying on the bars. Yeah. They'll pull off to the left, slap their ass, and then point to where they just came from. And I'm thinking, what are you doing? Are you... Slapping your ass and then pointing to a rock, or like yeah, what, you want, what are they doing? They want you to pull through. That's their. That's the way they think it should be done. Yeah, one elbow to pull through. It makes the most sense because you're literally like pulling. You're like pushing them up, right? Like you're yeah. like, hey, I'm done. You come on through. Come through on this side. I'm, yeah. I'm flicking my right elbow. It makes the most sense because. Like you're going to, the person in the front is going to come back out. Yeah. I mean, you can do it on the other side. I don't do it on the other side that much. Down here, they do a lot because it's windy and it's flat and there's no, there's not a lot of tree coverage like like New England. So you'll get these open roads. So if the wind's coming from a sure. certain side, you'll do one flick and go, let the, the whole, way. let the group block you from the wind as you're going back. Right. Essentially, you're like echeloning the whole group, essentially. Yes. Right. So if the wind's coming from the left, you're going to flick your left elbow so that you tuck away to the right, tuck away to the right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, that's really all I can think of, group ride etiquette wise. What do you think? Anything else come to mind? Um, and we went over a lot. We went over everything I had written down. Some groups get too big, you know. I mean, you got to limit them to. Yeah. Breaking up groups is great. Even if it's. Even if it's like, uh, you know, like uh, not necessarily A and B pace, but um, Johnny's Place does this a lot. Uh, local, yeah. you know, like shop and club club ride and with uh, John Harris. And they if it's like more than 12 people, they always split it up into two groups, like no matter what, you know, yeah. just think easier to manage. It's it doesn't mean you're going any slower. It just means like, hey, we're going to leave two minutes before you or whatever, you know, so like. We're not we're not going to see you out there. And maybe it does mean it's like an A pace and a B pace, depending on how hard people want to go. But, yeah, groups can be too big. And, um, you know, we got to you got to sort of play nice with the cars as much as you might not want to, you know. 
Um, one more thing, safety. And I know you don't like this. Yeah. Light, like a rear light. Yeah, you know, you should be wearing, you should have a rear light. I agree. I know. I mean, years ago, it was uncool to have yeah. lights. It was like, I mean, it was uncool to wear a helmet. I think it just, I, what I don't like about it is I don't like how it changes the silhouette of my bike. Like, I don't like having that thing on my seat post when I look at it. But there are some more slick ones. You can attach them to the bottom of your saddles or whatever, you know? Yeah. No, yeah. you're right. Lights I, lights, and high vis. I also don't wear a lot of high vis stuff. I know. Um, and it's that's important. I wear it in the woods when I have to because I'm hunting. But, like, most of the time I wear dark black or purple or blue or whatever. So, yeah. And here I leave early in the morning a lot before yeah. sun up. So I have to try to wear my biz stuff. Yeah. Well, Zoom's going to kick us off in less than in about 30 seconds. Um, I do think we covered a lot of good stuff. So are you feeling good about this? I am. Yes, I am. All right, cool. Thank you for coming back on the podcast. Let's have you again another time soon. All right, man. Thanks for having me. All right. Love you. Love you too, buddy. Bye. Bye. Well, thanks, Dad. Like I said before, if you have any uh, thoughts or comments or anything when it comes to group riding etiquette, please leave them in the comments of the YouTube video. Shoot me an email, john at itsjustahill.com. That's john, J-O-N, at itsjustahill.com. Also, check out our website if you want. Uh, That's where we post our videos, latest podcasts like this one and other ones that we've done. You can buy our merch there. We will have a new kit coming out soon with our new like collaboration with uh, MBX. We'll have kits powered by MBX, which I'm really excited about the design, and those should be available to purchase through our Pactimo uh, Club kit store relatively soon. Trying to do a good job at offering sort of uh, a, a broad range of spectrum uh, of, of price points for options. Uh, I have very sensitive sit bones, so I like an expensive bib short, but I know that doesn't necessarily work for everyone, nor does it work for everyone's bank account. So we're trying to offer a couple of different price points when it comes to jerseys, bibs, some trail jerseys, uh, cycling caps, and other accessories like that. So keep an eye out for that. You can head over to itsjustahill.com, follow us on Strava, check out our WhatsApp. You can join us there and get in on the conversation about what we might be talking about in an upcoming episode of the show, or maybe we're just like trying to arrange a ride or anything like that. Um, other than Cranksgiving, which I mentioned on November 24th, we don't really have any other group rides on the dock at this moment, but as uh, we sort of continue into the colder season here in New England, we will try to keep an eye out on the weather and schedule group rides for Saturdays or Sundays, or maybe early Friday mornings or Wednesday mornings, or, you know, it's sort of random, but that's sort of how I like it. And my time and schedule is random with work and cycling and all of that stuff. So, um, yeah, just trying to figure it out from here or there. I would like to give a quick shout out to my partner in crime, my podcast partner in crime, BSP, Brian St. Pierre. Brian, thank you once again for editing this show and always being uh, uh, just, you know, a solid collaborating partner on this podcast. Uh, if if you ever think like, wow, that podcast sounds really good. Um, maybe I'm sure you're thinking that all the time. It's not, it has nothing to do with me. That's all Brian, baby. I just uh, sit here and uh, turn these lights on. And usually ramble for a little bit too long. No one came here to hear to, for me to talk in the beginning or the end. They, they're, it's all about the meat in the middle. Um, but yeah, Cranksgiving, it's just a hill.com, November 24th. Check it out. Keep an eye out for the roots. Uh, get your canned goods and your non perishable food items ready. That will sort of be our last biggest event of the season, maybe. And uh, Winter Bike League will be coming too soon. Uh, winter technically doesn't start until December 21st, so Winter Bike League won't be until after that. But uh, we did do that last year, and uh, it was a lot of fun. And I'm thinking about doing it very similarly, but a little bit different. I think we had six stages last year. People got points for showing up, and then you got points for certain segments. And uh, yeah, we'll uh, elaborate on that a little bit as we get a little bit closer. And uh, unfortunately, the months get a little bit colder and the days get a little bit shorter, but that's okay. Fire up those trainers. Sign back up for Zwift if you want. I won't be. I'm just going to be using my Garmin head unit on the trainer and riding in temperatures that are far too cold. I do want to get... I do. I want to get a pair of a uh, road. We. I want to get a road wheel set for my gravel bike so I can ride it outside in the winter. So if anyone has any leads on a disc brake uh, road wheel set that I could throw on my salsa, um, hit me up. 
that I said my email a million times before. I'm not going to say it again. There's plenty of ways to contact me or contact the group. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Like I said, subscribing, liking, all that good stuff is always helpful. And we'll see you on the next one. Decaf left, regular right. Decaf left, regular right. It's very challenging work. <laughs>